coconuts. I'm dumb and you're shy. What do you think? Huh? Good morning, beautiful people. I come here today for another Train 4 TV because, believe it or not, this year is Rocky's 40th anniversary year. So I'm going to talk about some facts that happened throughout Rocky 1 and hopefully this will entertain you guys. So fact 1, we're looking into the Steadicam. So Steadicam was first used on Rocky 1, uh, which is quite interesting actually because it's how it's used in most mainline cinemas, most mainline movies, it's, it's all over Hollywood at the moment. But if you listen carefully during the Rocky production, you can actually hear the clinking and the clanking and the, the mechanics of the Steadicam because it's not very really refined. Now, the Steadicam did break whilst Rocky 1 was in production. It broke due to cold weather, allegedly. Um, fortunately, Garrett Brown, if I've pronounced that right, um, he invented the Steadicam and he was actually on the set of Rocky recording it and he managed to fix it with two car batteries. Just rig it up just for the step scene, which is absolutely phenomenal. Moving on to the next fact. Now the next fact of Rocky running up those iconic stairs in Philly. Now what you don't realise is he's running up this uh, stairs to the Museum of Art at the very top. He actually failed the run the first time, which is phenomenal. And then immediately after, <laughs> within an hour after, he ran the steps again. So both scenes where you see Rocky failing at the beginning of the movie and successful at the end was actually done within an hour of each other. So. If at first you don't succeed, try again an hour later, I guess. Third fact, which we'll find really, really interesting. So basically, the victory dance at the top of the Philly Steps, that was played in reverse. You never would have guessed it. But if you look at it, you can actually see, it looks a bit weird how he's moving. He's moving kind of bizarrely. And it's because it's recorded backwards. Originally, they zoomed the movie coming out from the Philly steps and realised it wasn't very impactful, so they reversed it so it was zoomed in. We are looking into the fight scene. It was also recorded backwards, guys. Now, not in the same way that the Philly steps was. Not at all. But just to save budget, save cost. It actually worked out much more cost effective to add all of that junk on Sylvester Sloan's face and remove the makeup as they was doing the fight. So the very last fight scene that you see with Apollo Creed and Rocky was actually the first fight scene recorded. Then they removed the makeup to save cost. Real soon, eh? Yeah, a billion dollars. Money, 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 money! So basically, Rocky was actually a low budget film. Not a lot of people realize this. They had a million dollars to produce this film, which, yes, that sounds a lot. Um, in retrospect, to make a movie, it's really not. But anything over a fiver is a lot for me. I'm not gonna lie. So Stallone wrote the script for nothing in return to be starred in it. And there is a massive story about Stallone's back life with that. It's quite inspirational. Put this in your glove. What's this? 500 bucks, don't worry about it. Now it shows in the actual movie, with the Hertz van in the background, that's a mistake. That's actually one of the production trucks. It's just they couldn't afford to edit it and remove it. And that's your bonus chip, guys. Now Stallone was actually bribed $250,000 to sell the script, but he refused to do so, even though he really, really needed the money. He was just so admirable in the fact that he wanted to star in this movie and he wanted to make it a movie of his own. Now, he took the raw end of the deal. I'm gonna stick this face on a stamp, what do you think? But I'm sure I speak for everybody when I say this. Stallone, we thank you. Rocky is such a cultural icon. It's such a classic that has been repeated over and over and over and over and over and there's reason for that. You guessed it, Frank Stallone. However, I bet you didn't know that Frank Stallone, his little brother, was in the movie. He's in that little street choir band, there he is, right there. And he also appears later on with his brother insulting him. Hey, hey. The bomb from the dock. Get a jab, you bomb. Here we go, bonus tip. So also his dad, Frank Stallone Sr., was ringing the bell ringside. Next fact, the final scene. Now I bet you didn't know that the final scene was actually wrapped up 
quite early and it ended with Sylvester Stallone leaving the ring successful, triumphant as, well, in the underdog that got beat up, lost, but people's champ. They actually went back into production a couple of months after. They didn't have a lot of extras, it was mainly family, friends, and they reshot the end scene with him finishing in the actual ring. Now, there was about 30 extras that was available for the reshots, so as you see, if it's overly populated on the screen, that's an original cut. When you see that everybody's in the ring, jumping around him, that's actually the only people that was available. Fact number eight, guys. Now, when we're talking about cutting cost and making this movie as successful as it possibly was, they actually shot a lot of the things in different areas, not Philly. What I mean by that, they actually shot things in the producer's office, not in Philadelphia, whatsoever. And you wouldn't know this unless you look really carefully, but I'm going to ruin the movie for you guys. It's a backdrop. They used a backdrop. They can change the scene. They realise that they're actually on set, so it didn't need to look boring outside. They can make it look like Philly without it actually being there. Right, guys, we're down to the final fact. Now, I did mention the Philadelphia Steps and I went a lot on about it and I didn't mean to ruin the movie, guys, but there is this scene with the one-arm push-ups. Now, believe it or not, Sylvester Stallone has never done one-arm push-ups or clapping push-ups ever, but there was miles upon miles upon miles upon miles of him running, jogging, doing the Philly Steps. It looked more like a marathon movie than it did a boxing movie. So they basically said, hey, Sly, get down and do one-arm push-ups. He was like, yeah, I don't know how to do that. But basically, they gave him a go at it, and he smashed it. You know, it made the movie more interesting, it added some depth of character, and that struggle was real. Well done, Sly. I'm really proud. Really proud. Yeah, that's okay. But we did get to see him smash his face in during the actual fight. So he may not have fell flat on his face doing the push-ups, but, you know, you win some, you lose some. Hope this fact one was really good. I know it's a little bit different to Train 4 TV, but if you like the facts on the Train 4 TV characters, um, I'm happy to do them. Just leave a comment below, guys. Let me know. So until next time, tune into the next video, guys, and take care now.